Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devu.com. In this lesson, things are going to get a little bit more interesting. Based on user input, we're going to write logic to execute either one block of code or another block of code. Uh, so when I use the term logic, I mean that we're going to make a decision to execute some code um, based on some condition. That could be the user's input from the keyboard, uh, maybe the state of the computer system itself, maybe some other data that we have access to or available to us. But somehow we're going to make a decision on whether to branch out and execute this code or execute this other code. All right. And so let's begin the way that we normally do by creating a new project. And I'm going to go File, New, Project. Make sure to choose a console application, C-sharp console application, and we'll call this project Decisions and click OK. And what I want to do is we're going to create a little game. And we're going to do it right here in static void main. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start typing. You can pause uh, to catch up with me. Alrighty, so hopefully most of this will make sense. Uh, let's go ahead and run the application. And here we're going to play Bob's Big Giveaway, and we can choose a door. What's behind door one, two, or three? I'm going to choose what's behind door number one, and it said, hey, you want a new car? Awesome. Let's play again. I'd like to win something else. And so now we can type in the number two, and well, hmm, nothing really happens at all. I'm going to hit enter again on my keyboard, and the application just ends. Uh, we can try the same thing for three, but I suspect the same thing will happen with number two. And I can just type something randomly, and again, nothing really happens here. But let's start at the basics and talk about this if statement that we've created here, uh, which is really the purpose of this lesson in the first place. Uh, the if statement is called a decision statement because we will decide whether to execute any of the code inside of this inner code block based on this evaluation that we're going to do after the if keyword. So in this case, what we're doing is evaluating whatever the user typed in, and we're gathering that from the console.read line like we learned in the previous lesson. So the user types something in the hit enter. We got that now in the user value variable, and we want to perform an evaluation to see if what the user typed in is equal to this literal string number one. All right, and so here's where hopefully I want to call your attention to this. You can see that I'm using two equal signs next to each other. So we already learned previously that a single equal sign is actually an assignment operator. We're assigning the value of whatever the user typed in, in this case, in the console.read line, to the variable user value using this assignment operator. But whenever you use two equal signs next to each other, you're going to do an evaluation for true or false. So whatever's inside of this opening and closing parentheses, we're going to, we're going to perform an evaluation. Is user value, in fact, equal to the number one, or the, rather the, the string character one, or is it not equal to the string character one? It can only be true or false, all right? And so based on that, if whatever the evaluation of that expression is, if it turns out to be true, then and only then will we perform the code, defining the code block immediately after that if statement. 
If that's not true, if this turns out to be a false statement, then we'll just ignore whatever's inside of this code block and we'll continue the execution of our application uh, to line 23 and then beyond. All right, so that's how it works. Um, but I tell you what, this isn't a very interesting example because obviously here we have um, we have no no prize for door two or door three. And then what happens if somebody just types in four, five, six, or ASDF or whatever on the keyboard? We need to account for all of those scenarios in our application. So let me uh, continue typing in some code here. And you can, again, pause the video if you need to to follow along. Uh, but we'll start by using an else if statement right below our, our code block for the if statement. Okay, so here we go. All right, well, let's stop right there for the moment. And you can see that in order to evaluate additional conditions, I can use the else if statements. In fact, I have two of them here. So if this first evaluation is not true, then we'll continue on and do a second and a third and maybe a fourth and fifth, how many other evaluations you wanna do. However, if this is true, then we'll no longer run any of these additional checks will just continue on to line number 33. The same is true here. If this is not true, then we're gonna evaluate uh, this next expression. If this is true and we execute the, the code inside of the code block immediately following it, then we'll just go ahead and skip over this last else if statement and continue on to line number 33, all right? So uh, if we were to run the application, let's go ahead and just quickly run through scenario number two. Hey, we want a boat. And scenario number three, which obviously would allow us to win a cat. But then we still haven't accounted for the situation where we type in four or anything else like the word uh, or just random letters on the, the keyboard. Nothing really happens in those situations. What we really need is what I would call a catch-all case. And so to do that, we'll just create an else statement at, at the very end of our if, else, if construct. And so here what we'll do is just set string uh, message equals, um, sorry, uh, we didn't understand. And then console dot uh, right line message. All right. So now we're catching every other case possible, no matter what the user types in. So let's go ahead and run the application. Again, I'll just type in some junk from the keyboard, hit enter, and it says, sorry, we didn't understand. And we continue on. Okay. So that's how an if decision statement works. Uh, it also has these optional parts of the else if and the else statements uh, for either additional um, uh, additional evaluations or what I call the catch-all, just in case none of the conditions are true. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things about this, and we're, we're going to continue on and talk about one other type of decision operator that we can use, a conditional operator. But before we do that, here's an opportunity to clean up our code. Um, let's, let's look for areas where we've essentially got the same code repeated over and over and over again. And I can see a couple of, of instances where this is true. The first would be where we have this console.writeLine message. You see we've repeated that in line 20, 25, 30, 
and 35. Wouldn't it be great to keep our code a little smaller and only use that once at the very end of our evaluation, like put it right there outside of the if, else, if, else uh, decision um, statements. All right. So let's go ahead and just remove those from there completely. All right. But when we do that, notice that I'm getting a red squiggly line under the word message. The name message doesn't exist in the current context. All right, so we're going to talk about scope and declaring variables inside of certain scopes in a little bit, but just to kind of um, lead up to that conversation. Essentially, when we define a variable inside of an inner scope, it's not available outside of that scope. In other words, if we define a variable inside of a code block, inside of the curly braces, it's only available inside of those curly braces, not available outside of those curly braces. So what we'll have to do is define that message variable outside of our if statements so that it's accessible to all of the inner code blocks as well as our console.writeLine message here in line number 35. So it's a very simple fix. We'll just do this string message equals and then we'll just set it to an empty string to begin with. All right, so now you'll see a different message, uh, a red squiggly line, but we've seen this before. You can't define the same variable twice, even if it's in an inner scope. Uh, so what we'll do is just say, instead of defining the variable message there, we'll just set our existing string variable called message to the value uh, like so. Okay, great. So now our application should run. We've eliminated a lot of code. And admittedly, I created a straw man here. I wrote uh, more code than I needed to, but I wanted to illustrate this point. So again, if we were to um, run the application, it works correctly. But there's one other change that we can make. Um, code blocks uh, inside of, uh, as we're using them inside of if, else if, and else statements, if there's not more than one line of code, uh, to execute, then we don't even need to use the curly braces. In other words, uh, since there's just one line of code here underneath my if statement, I can just remove it and make it small like that, real compact. Same is true here, and same is true here. Now, in this case, uh, maybe just to kind of illustrate why you would need the open and closing curly braces. Uh, if I were to do this, message equals message plus you lose, like so, and I'll even add a little space here to make it look correct. Let's go ahead and test that, that else case just real quick. And I'll type anything in there and hit enter. It says, sorry, we didn't understand you lose. Notice that we were able to concatenate two strings together. I did it on two separate lines, don't really need to. But if I were to attempt to remove the, um, uh, the opening and closing curly braces there, we're going to get a very different result when we run our application. So for example, if I hit three, um, notice that you want a new cat, you lose. Wait, what? How? Why did that happen? You want a new cat, but you lose. Well, well, there is no such thing as a free cat, but at any rate, uh, it's because what it's really seeing is this, like that, all right? If we want these two to be evaluated together inside the same code block, we have to in, in, include them in the same code block. Otherwise, this being outside of that code block will execute no matter which of these if or else if conditions are true. All right, so let's go ahead and put that back in there just to kind of illustrate that idea. In fact, if we were to do something like this, I can even make this a little bit smaller. Let's comment that out. And I'm gonna show you a new operator, which is just uh, this. Okay, so now instead of going message equals message plus you lose, essentially I'm saying give me whatever's in the variable message, concatenate on the word you lose, and then assign that back into the variable message. 
That's what I did here. I just do it all in one step right there where I say whatever's in the variable message on the end of that concatenate uh, you lose. So this is the assignment and concatenation operator kind of combined into one, okay? Uh, just a little shortcut there. All right, so now let's do this. Let's talk about another style of, of, of um, decision statements. It's actually an operator called the, um, the conditional operator. And this works well if you have an if or else kind of scenario and you don't have multiple items to evaluate evaluate like we did here. So I'm going to copy some code from lines 14 and 15. Whoops. Yeah, and line 16 too. Let's just copy all of those and we're going to paste them down below our commented area. All right. And then what I'm going to do is um, this. This a little bit different this time. Okay, there we go. Now I've written a lot of extra code that I need to. I'm going to show you how to shorten this up in just a moment. All right, so here uh, the key to this is this little evaluation that I'm doing on line number 42. Remember that we're going to evaluate anything in between of the parentheses whenever we see the double equal sign. That means we're doing an evaluation. Is the user value that they typed in and submitted through the previous line of code, line number 40, is it equal to the literal value one? If that is true, if this equates to true, then what we wanna do is, is everything after the question mark, we're going to take that value and assign it to our new variable called message. All right, so if the user types in one, We'll find the word boat, the literal string boat, and we'll assign it to the variable message. However, if this equates to false, so they type in something different, then anything after the colon will be taken and assigned to the variable message, and we'll use that below. So let's go ahead and run the application. We'll run it twice. Uh, we can choose a door, and if they choose door number one, they win a boat. Uh, however, if we run the application a second time and we choose anything else, then you'll only win a strand of lint. Again, this is only useful in a if-else uh, condition, not when you have multiple conditions to, to evaluate. All right, now let's address this last little part here because um, uh, I can shorten this up considerably. Notice in order to get it all to print out on one line, I only use console.write. And so then I, I typed out the literal string and then I have a second line where I'm actually then, uh, uh, then printing out the actual message from line 42. And then finally to add a period at the end, I'm having to do yet another console.write statement in order to add a period, okay? I can shorten all that up in one line of code. Watch how I do this. In fact, let's go ahead and just, I'll comment out these lines individually like so, and then I'm going to use a replacement character inside of the console.write uh, console.write line in order to um, shorten this up a little bit. So we'll use a write line instead. And we'll put U1A, and then I'm going to use what we what I call a uh, replacement code. So a replacement code of zero. And then after I give it that literal string, I'm gonna use a comma, and then give it the actual message variable that I want. Whatever's inside of this, I want it replaced in here, okay? So eliminate that, 
and that um, the, the, the curly braces with the zero and put the message variable value inside of there. So let's run the application again just to see this working. I'm gonna type the number one and get the same result, all right? Now, what if we wanted to expand on this idea? Here, let me comment that out. And what if I wanted it to replace two values inside of that console.writeline string? So let's do something like this. You entered, and then we'll go zero. Therefore, you won a, all right. And so in this case, after the comma, I'm gonna enter the user value and then the message here. Let's make sure you can see that. All right, hopefully you can see that all on screen at one time. So I need to do one little thing here is change that to a one. All right, so this says take the first item. So in software development, typically you don't start with the number one, you start with the number zero. I don't know. So we're gonna see this pop up again and again. So the first item in the list will be at element zero. The second item in the list will always be at element one and so on. All right, so the very first item, this will be matched and replaced by the very first item in that comma delimited list of input parameters after the literal string uh, that that little template that we created for ourselves. Then here, we're going to do a second replacement and replace that with whatever's inside of the message variable. So when we run the application, and we type in the number one, said you entered one, therefore you want to vote. Awesome, all right. Okay, so that's enough for one lesson. Uh, hopefully you've learned a couple of important things in this lesson. First of all, we talked about the if decision statement as well as the else if and the else and how to do a, a comparison, an evaluation between two values to determine true or false if we're using an if statement and we're doing that evaluation, then anything, uh, the code that is in the code block below it will get executed. If that evaluation is true, if it's not, it'll either drop down to a second and subsequent evaluation or even do a catch all in the else state statement. We talked about using uh, curly braces for a code block versus when you don't need them. We talked about keeping your code nice and tidy and small. We talked about um, declaring variables inside of scope and inner scope and outer scope uh, as defined by our curly braces for code blocks. We talked about the conditional operators uh, being able to all in one line do a check for true or false, and if it's true, assign one value versus a different value to a new variable. We talked about um, uh, format codes inside of literal strings for our console.write line and how to replace uh, those replacement codes with with variable values that we then also pass in in our console.write line statement like you see here at the very bottom in line number 49, okay? So again, covered a lot of ground. Hopefully this all makes sense. If not, rewatch the video, just watch those portions that didn't make sense. Make sure you're typing in the code yourself uh, so that you can come to some of these epiphanies as you're typing, okay? All right, we'll pick it up in the next lesson. See you there, thanks.